Y'all do. We're just, we were just able to wander around. Uh, we could just wander around and help people move stuff. Yeah, that was fun. What? So some of you on Facebook probably saw the video I posted uh, Eric Lyons explaining apologetics. Yeah. Yeah. Gradually showed that to us after I finished talking. So uh, I definitely can talk a long time about apologetics. I was a fan of apologetics long before I knew Kyle Buddy even existed. Uh, <laughs> when I went to college in 1965, there were very few people doing Christian evidence. There was a guy named John Clayton out of South Kentucky who had been converted from atheism. Another guy named John Clark, and it was the only people then at that time really helping young science students wrap their hands around creation. And it was real refreshing to see somebody in the science community come forward at that time. And of course, Apologetic Express is probably among the church the best known uh, uh, Christian evidences organization. There are as far as we know, I checked with Kyle today. I got online and found out for Christian Evidences Association with the Church of Christ. There are four. Uh, there's one called the Warren Center up in West Virginia. If I got a name where it got the name Warren. Tim Shoemaker's not even going to know the answer. Uh, Thomas, B. Thomas B. Warren. That's right. Focus is uh, up, in, up in Tennessee. Brad Harib has spoken before at... Uh, Oh, I need to stay still, but I'm sorry. There you go. Uh, Brad Harum has spoken to us back in Roebuck, and he uh, separated from Apologetic Express and started Focus. Daily Apologetics is out of South Carolina, of course, Apologetic Express, their website, ApologeticExpress.org, and they just have international presence. Uh, I don't know how many hits they have. A lot of us have been, uh, just our hearts have been breaking today, and our Lines have been focused on Texas. One of Kyle's works, of several works, and I'll talk about before, he will talk about those in his uh, uh, video, but he works with WBBS, World Video Bible School. You can get on their website. I use it quite a bit because they have an interpreter there that interprets a lot of these lessons. So our deaf watch a lot of these lessons from World Video Bible School. But there is one about the problem of evil, pain, and suffering. And I think it bear all of us probably watch right now and wrap our hands around the way it has been described as evil that has happened once again. I know our hearts are really aching. We only have one member of this church that I know of that has lost a child to murder, and that's Robin Green. But uh, many, many have lost uh, young children and family members, but this is just beyond description. So. It, it would probably help to, to, and Kyle does that when it's very, very effective. So, uh, apologetics, uh, uh, and Eric's going to talk about uh, about that as well, but it comes from 1 Peter uh, uh, 3.15. Uh, if I can find it, I marked it. Is it 1 Peter 3.15? That's it, David. Read that for us, would you? But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Thank you, David. Yes, don't uh, look for 1 Peter 3.15 when you've marked 2 Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David, for being able to But that word in Greek is apologia. And Eric's going to explain a little bit about apologetics, what it is, but it's being ready to give an answer. Um, many of us, how many have been to the Creation Museum in Kentucky? Quite a few of our young people got to go. I know Christy and Emily's family got to go this, this summer. Uh, I was very impressed by the trip I took up there several years ago. It had just opened, and uh, we just happened to go in on a day that Ken Ham was speaking in the auditorium. Just coincidental. So we walked in a little late, got into his lesson. His lesson was about the Acts 2 versus the Acts 17 population. Now, who was preacher, Peter preaching to in Acts chapter 2? Jews. Preaching to the Jews. The Jews had a foundation. They knew about creation. They believed in God. They, they had a problem with the Messiah, but they had a foundation. Um, one place I did mark, 
correctly, if I still have it, which I didn't, is 1 Corinthians uh, one twenty three. Somebody gets here before I do because I've lost my work again. Uh, what the gospel was, uh, the gospel was a stumbling block to the Jews because of Christ. And what was it to the Gentiles? Foolishness. Foolishness to the Gentiles. And so <clears throat> the thing that impressed me, and I came back and talked to the elders about this, we are not speaking to the Acts 2 generation. We're not speaking to the Acts 2 population. We're speaking to the Acts 17 population, a people of skeptics, doubters, atheists, polygamists. That's who the audience of the gospel is today. And that's why apologetics is so important. That's why it's so necessary for us to be ready to give an answer. Um, in preparation, I got online and listened a little bit to Ken Ham has a very good talk about uh, about about this very subject. Uh, just germane to our mission emphasis this month in the UK, we did see Graham McDonald a couple weeks ago. Only five percent of the citizens, British citizens consider themselves religious. Five percent in Japan. They are faced with a situation of many gods. And so the, the, the preachers that went there, had they didn't have the foundation that we have. The Jews had that foundation. They didn't have a foundation. They had many gods. So a minister, a missionary, translated the scriptures. And when they, you say God to a Japanese person or an, or, an, or an Indian person, they think of many gods. So he translated the scriptures to the Creator. And that's where his starting point was, the creator. And that was that was identified, the Japanese population identified with that and they can understand. So we have that today. We have this, this group of uh, skeptics, doubters, polygamists. What are some of the gods, quote unquote, that people worship today, especially in our country? Cell phone. No, I didn't think about that. <laughs> Technology. Fame, that's another one. Self. I say earth. You know, I've always, you know, worship Mother Earth. You know, we're all, you know, I, I believe in, I believe in recycling and everything else, but it has to, be, to me, in many ways, to become a religion. So, we are facing a, a society that uh, that do not does not have the foundation. One of the one of the statistics that Ken Ham quotes in, in his talk, and, and uh, I, 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 would, I would mention him only to go there with with the seasoning of the gospel. I'll tell you a little funny story about that and that, that session we were in. But he said that among, you know, generation, you know, my, my, my generation is the boomers, you know, born between 1920, uh, 1946, 64. Generation X, Y, and Z are the ones born since 65. Among, especially the, the young adults, post millennials, generation X, Y, 53% who started out going to church have stopped. So that's where we are. We're, we're the people that need to be convinced of who God is, especially in times like this. They talked about evil. And I saw, Emily, I saw your post on Facebook and so many comments on it. That was spot on. We need Jesus in this world because of things like this. So uh, we have had a secularization of the church. We've had leaders to say that America is no longer a Christian nation. And, and I understood that to be because it was a milking pot, but it, we don't have that thinking that we once did. So uh, our, our, our job is to bring people to Christ through apologetics because that's where we have to we can't take the foundation that the Jews had or that people in, in the South or the Bible Belt. We have that foundation, but other places they don't. So uh, we, we've, got to, we've got to study and take apologetics uh, take take an answer to them. Uh, so uh, I think Brother Robert uh, used this in his lesson today. But so what do they are? And I, I've already talked to JJ about this and Christy. I said, what scripture would you think would be in the ark when you when you get out of the ark at the top store? You get out there, and all these scriptures are on the wall. What scripture do you think you might find at the ark? Talk about, about the rainbow. Huh? Talk about the rainbow. No, not the rainbow. 
something about it, 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 it pertains to the ark. Yeah, First Peter three twenty one. We're in view that is. Eight souls were saved by water. <laughs> Baptism is a like figure. Um, I watched uh, Ken Ham. This is a Ken talk he gives again and again. But I heard this when we went to uh, when we went to uh, uh, the uh, uh, the Creation Museum. Listen to it. It was a very impressive talk. It really emphasizes the need for uh, for apologetics, but. He was talking about that Acts 2 population, about preacher, Peter preaching to the Acts 2 population. He throws a slide of Acts 2.38 up on the screen, and he says, repent, and so on. <laughs> and that's, that's on video. You can watch it on the video. He just couldn't get it out of his mouth. So it was, just, it was kind of funny that here we are going to the ark to have this picture, you know, and, and this connection with 1 Peter 3.21, and it's, it's not there. So anyway, but it, uh, it's, it, I recommend going there because it really does help your fight. I know the young people, I know we're blessed to have made that trip, and thanks to JJ and me for doing it. Any, I've got just a minute or two before the video started. Any questions? Uh, I, got, I thought I could talk much longer, but obviously not. <laughs> Evolutionary teaching permeates the world. That's a quote. That's what we have now. You know, people just assume evolution. We assume evolution. What does BCE mean? Before the common era. Before the common era, right. You know, they want to take Christ. What does A.D. mean, by the way? And you know that. Uh, and Udomini always comes before the date, not after. Thank you, Aaron. But we, we took Anodomini away because of what? Or society took it away. Because it means in the year of who? Our Lord. So we call that the common era. And so the C means what? Before who? Right. We took that away and with BCE, before the common era. But what's the problem? Where does the common era start with Christ? You can't get away from it. If you want to change the terminology, it's still dated before Christ and from the year of our Lord. So they can't get away from it. Um, any, any questions or anything before Eric explains to us a little bit about apologetics? I, I would like to say one thing about Eric. I, I often ask, you know, uh, I think Alex was looking for a speaker and Kyle was not available. I said, call Eric Klein. Eric, they're kind of like Mutt and Jeff, Laurel and Harley, uh, Lewis and what's the other guy? Martin, 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 Lewis and Martin. So Eric and Eric, <laughs> 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 I'm getting old and I'm terrible. I'm glad I'm not playing trivia. But, uh, Eric has some terrific books called The Anvil Rings. They are about explaining Bible, alleged Bible contradictions. There are now three volumes of this, but Eric has put these out pretty much himself. I uh, just, just very, very well worn because it's just, if you, if you have a, a question, especially around timing, around the resurrection, go to that. Go, go get one of these books and go there. But, but Kyle's, a lot of Kyle's work is writing, a lot of his working with the v, uh, WVBS. A lot of us have the Apologetics Bible, which you must have a magnifying glass for. Uh, he's going to give you a little news about that. I don't, I don't hear him say he's going to talk about the uh, large print Bible would be great. But uh, there, are, there's, there are books for young people. A lot of our young people have used the uh, am, I, am I Ready to Be Baptized book. It really helps kids make that decision. Uh, Tommy brought in a lot of the younger uh, children's books that they put out. And, Eric and, uh, and and some of the other guys. My mother, Eric and Kyle have done these books, but it's great. And of course, uh, they have one book called Michael's Two Daddies, which is very appropriate and very good in teaching and explaining situation. The idea is God does God love Michael's two daddies. You won't go any won't go any in further there. <laughs> Not me. Not me. Not me. Sorry. Sorry. No, somebody else. <laughs> it's time for videos. Obviously, no questions. We're going to start videos. We have a little time at the end. Uh, we will. Uh, we'll, we'll have some uh, uh, question and answer time. So, thank you, guys. I guess we're happy to respond to Jennifer and let her know that apologetics is, in fact, all about giving answers and not apologizing as so many think of it in the 21st century. The English word apologetics is derived from the Greek apologia, meaning defense. 
Although there are plenty of things that imperfect Christians need to confess and repent of, God doesn't want Christians to apologize or be sorry for their allegiance to the Lord Jesus and His Word. Rather, as the Apostle Peter declared, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. The word apologetics can apply to almost any subject matter, but most often it's discussed in the context of Christian apologetics. God expects Christians to give an outward defense of their inward hope. He wants His people not to take up swords in an attempt to spread Christianity with carnal warfare, but to charge ahead with knowledge and the word of truth. Disciples of Christ look to destroy arguments and every proud obstacle to the knowledge of God and to take every thought captive to obey Christ. God desires for Christians to base their actions upon truth that is honestly and logically defended rather than false doctrine which is dishonestly or naively accepted and is emotionally driven. Admittedly, the early Christians were full of emotions. They joyfully recognized that the long-awaited, much-anticipated Messiah had just recently come into the world and established His spiritual kingdom. They penitently acknowledged their sins. They lovingly sacrificed their material possessions in order to help the poor among them. And in the face of great suffering, they courageously continued preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence. But in the end, whatever feelings they had, Whatever emotions they felt, these sensations were not the driving force behind their allegiance to Jesus Christ. The early church grew in faith and number, not because they had a better felt than told kind of religion, but because they sincerely believed truth, which they were joyfully committed to spreading and defending just as faithful Christians are today. If you would like to know more about Christian apologetics, visit us at apologeticspress.org. Hello, good friends and brothers and sisters at the Deerfoot Church of Christ. My name is Kyle Butt. I know many of you and have known for many years, in fact, going all the way back to when I was in college and I was dating Bethany Glass at the time. We've been married now for 23 years and one of the elders there at the congregation, Rick Glass, which I'm sure many, if not all of you know, is my father-in-law and I have been having a wonderful time being a part of what you do there, going to Maywood Camp, a Maywood Christian Camp over the years, and just getting to be involved with you as a congregation. And one of the aspects of that fellowship that we've enjoyed over the years is that you have helped financially support my work at Apologetics Press. And I am grateful for that, truly grateful, and you have done that for many years. And I wanted just to tell you what we've been doing in the past a year or so, get you up to speed on what is going on with the work at AP because I think you would enjoy getting to see some of the resources we're putting out and getting to see some of the good work that you guys are helping to do. Several years ago, it's been actually about 10 years now, we were asked repeatedly over and over and over, hey, have you seen a study Bible that you would recommend? And we said at the time, no. We didn't know of any. There were several study Bibles on the market, but each one of them that we were familiar with had some information in it that we didn't think would be scriptural or go along with the teachings of the Bible. And so there at AP, we were basically sitting around one year-end meeting or one of the times we were planning on what we would be doing, and we asked, why doesn't anyone in the Brotherhood, in the Lord's Church, do a study Bible? And we decided that since Apologetics Press had been in working action for the last 40 years or so, we had so much material that we felt like it would be feasible to put together a study Bible. And so we started doing that. And that actually was about an eight-year project. And like I said, it was about 10 years ago. So the study Bible's been out now for about two years. And in that two-year period, we have gone through now four printings, and right now we have another printing at the printer, which is going to be about eight or 10,000 more. So we're having distributed about 32,000 of those study Bibles right now. I'll show you one of those. I think many of you have probably seen them. In fact, I think Rick 
and several of the men there, I think, have them and have purchased some of them for those of you at the congregation. It is a full-color, 2,500-page study Bible that has all multiple special sections in it, and then it has lots of commentary, and it has the proper understanding of the structure of the church with elders and deacons and various aspects of worship. And then, of course, all of our things that involve defending the faith. It's called the AP, Defending the Faith Study Bible. And we have all of the archaeological evidence for the inspiration of the Bible, the arguments for the existence of God, and things of that nature. So this has been out for years. But the exciting thing is that many of you have wanted a digital version of that. And so this year, one of our pushes was to get that in digital form. And we now have a very interactive digital format for that study Bible that's available on Olive Tree. And it is a basically a, a digital system where if there is a verse that we're dealing with, you can click on that verse and go to that verse and it will then take you to various different hot links that will help you deal with that passage or go to the commentary or go to the special section that deals with that. And so we've been really excited about that. Also, what's been in the works with the study Bible is that we are in the process of doing what we call the AP Light Defending the Faith Study Bible Version. And really all that is is going to be a about a 1,500-page, smaller carry edition that we envision going into places that people need Bibles and they would like some commentary at the front and at the back of the things that we primarily do. And so it's going to have about 100 pages or so, 50 in the front, 50 in the back, of things that we do like, how can you know God exists? How do you know that Jesus is God's son? How can you know the Bible is the inspired word of God? What do you need to do in order to become a Christian? What is the structure of the Lord's church? And some things like that. So that's going to be a much less expensive version that we feel like congregations can order 50 or 100 of them and send them to their mission points and send them to various different places where they would use a Bible, maybe in their pews, maybe in the you know, where they're sending some to preacher schools or things of that nature. And what we think is very exciting about this particular aspect of the study Bible is that Maybe you remember several years ago, I think now two or so, we had a, a lady that contacted us and said, hey, I'm studying with somebody from China. And these two ladies that we're studying with from China, one of them wants to become a Christian, but one of them just simply doesn't believe in God. And she said she, but she'd kind of like to, and she wishes she did, but she's just never really understood or had a belief in God. And so they called us and we sent them a little sixth grade book titled, How Do You Know God Is Real? That they then sent to this particular lady who two weeks or so later contacted them and said, hey, I've become a Christian. They said, what about your doubts in the existence of God? She said, oh, that little study Bible answered, that little book, How Do You Know God Is Real? answered everything that I was wondering about. And so we just feel like there are a lot of honest-hearted people, maybe in other countries like China or areas surrounding those where they haven't been taught anything about God, that a Bible with a little commentary in the front that just says, hey, how would you know God exists? And here are the evidences for that. How would you know the Bible's the inspired word of God? And here are the evidences for that. We feel like that could be a very powerful tool to bring people to their creator. And so that's in the works. In fact, I've got it on my desk right now, and we're doing the proofreading on that, and we look forward to that being out, I think, probably by the end of this year, and we're excited about that. Now, a couple other things that we have done throughout this year, the last six months or 12 months, we also have had for decades now, actually since uh, 2005, 2007, we've had two of our, our main books, Dinosaurs Unleashed, and then our other book, Truth Be Told. And these two have been our most popular, most widely distributed books that we've done, but they were getting where they just needed an update. Uh, like I said, we did them back in 2005, 2007. And so for the last 12 months, we did some real extensive work on updating them, 
adding new material to them, adding new pages that have videos and that have different and, and better graphics and things of that nature. And so those are two of the bigger projects we've done in the last 12 months or so. And they have started being distributed and they are going very, very well. And we're excited about those. Another couple things that we've done in the last 12 months or so. When we were looking at uh, Lads to Leaders, we realized that they didn't have any systematic study of Christian Evanses. And so we asked them, hey, would you guys partner with us and have a course on basic Christian Evanses, the existence of God, inspiration of the Bible, deity of Christ, and maybe then something about how you would defend your faith and they said, oh yeah, that sounds like a great idea. We'd love to do that. And so two years ago, we started writing what we call the Defenders series. And the unique thing about this Defenders series is that these books have in them little sections as you read through the chapters, you would see these little notes or these little symbols. And those little symbols take the kids to a video. And that video will be something in addition to what we've been discussing there in the book, but it will be in a video form. And in this first book, I think we have about 40 videos. And the first book is Defending God. The second book is Defending the Bible, and both of these are out now. Eric Lyons and I just finished the third book, which is Defending Jesus. And we just finished writing it. I'm going, interestingly, to Texas this Thursday, Right now it's Monday, and so in about three days or so, I'll go down to Texas, and I'm going to film several videos for our Defending Jesus book, and they'll do the editing and things of that nature. And these little videos are very interesting and easy to watch. In fact, you know what we have found out over the years is that we were putting out 35-minute, 45-minute lecture-type videos on these subjects and thought people would want to see those lecture videos. And, you know, for, oh, let's say you put it out in 2015, well, by now you might have 4,000, 5,000 views on those videos, which is exciting. That's 5,000 people who watch the video, but not really what we were hoping for. We were just hoping that we would be able to reach more people. And so what we have done is just ask the question, what is it about the material that is causing fewer people to watch it. And we discovered that it's the length of the videos, that many times a person would commit to four minutes, but they wouldn't commit to 40 minutes. And so we've taken lots of our material that is 40, 45 minute lecture form, and we've chopped it up into nine, five minute little videos. And it's been exciting to see what the Lord has been doing with that because we have had hundreds of thousands or 1.2 million or 2.4 million views on these materials that are shorter. And so when we have these little books and the kids watch the videos, then they're watching four or five minute videos on material that is very well edited. You have lots of things zooming in from the sides and graphics and things that keep the interest of the viewer and we have had all kinds of wonderful feedback on these. In fact, one of the exciting things that happened to me this last summer, I had a friend of mine who is a preacher at a congregation not far from here where I live, and one of their preachers was sick and couldn't come do the meeting that he was scheduled to do, and he said, Kyle, can you come do the Tuesday night of the meeting? And I said, sure, be glad to if I can make it, and could, my schedule was open, and so drove over there about 45 minutes, and was talking to him before the meeting got started. And we were standing in the back right by the door as people came in. And he said, well, Kyle, really appreciate the videos you guys have been putting out. In fact, I, I watched them with my class this morning. And I said, you know, it was Tuesday morning. I said, you know, what class did you watch them with? Because I knew he was a public school teacher. And he said, well, here in the place where we are, the county has allowed me to teach a Bible as history class. And in this Bible is history class, I get to use all of your materials. And he said, really like the shorter version, the kids really watch it well. He said, in fact, do you see that young lady right there? And he pointed to a young lady who was sitting about three rows from the bank. And I said, yeah. I said, tell me about it. 
He said she was in my class going through this information on creation and the material that you guys do. And she said, hey, I've got some question about questions about this. And so he said, well, just I preach down the road, come to the congregation, I'll answer any question you've got any time. And she did, and she was baptized into Christ. She invited her parents who came and were baptized into Christ. One of the friends from school that she had, she invited who was baptized into Christ and her friend's two parents and the aunt and uncle of that friend. And so in total, this friend of mine was telling me that eight baptisms had come from the work that he was doing there in the public school, teaching the Bible as history, using lots of our materials. In fact, he has told me in the past that he uses the Truth Be Told book basically as the textbook for his Bible as history class. And he said what he does is puts these Truth Be Tolds on the bookshelf there in his classroom and says, hey, if you want any of these, then you are more than welcome to take them. And he says he passes about 40 or 50 out every single year from the students that are in his class that want those books. And so that was very exciting to me to get to see some of the boots on the ground things that were being done with the videos that we are making. And they are really, really having a big impact as we understand it. And just looking at the views, we have several that will have 340,000 views or 560,000 views. Whereas before that, we were getting three or 4,000 every five or six years. And so we've been very excited about that. And then just as you continue to go, we always do, you know, just some what I call little things, although they're, I think, very important, but they don't take all that much time. Here is one of our newest books that we've put out that I wrote, I think, last year, and ultimately we got to put it out this year. That's God Made Kittens, and I think the year before we had God Made Puppies and various different God Made Birds, God Made Reptiles, things of that nature. And so we tried to hit all ages with the materials that we're producing. It was exciting just this last weekend. I was up at Challenge Youth Conference, and I got to speak to, to about 11,000 people. And they assigned me the topic of creation, and I got to tell 11,000 young people and their chaperones that God made them and put them here for the express purpose, purpose of bringing glory to their Creator. And it was thrilling to see how that was received. And that's what we're trying to do all over the nation and all over the world is to teach people about their marvelous and awesome creator and connect them to Jesus Christ so that they can and we can all live with that creator for eternity. And I'm very excited about what you're doing to help me and I'm very exciting about what, excited about what God is doing to get this information into the hands of the people that need it. So thank you very much, all of you dear brethren at the Deerfoot Congregation and elders and the leadership there, and I really appreciate everything you do for our Creator. Well, what's count on Mission Sunday so far? It was pushing 118,000. Uh, Keep it up all year. I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of joking that they took a cheap remark about being Mission Month last year, and we just kept going and going. And, uh, it was like $122 short of $118,000. No, you're, you're blowing it up before. <laughs> <laughs> it's $116,822. Oh, I thought I, 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 it was 116822 sorry. Uh, some, sister was, some sister was going to give the difference, and I guess I was hoping she'd give 1000 278 I was sure it's going to be 118000 by now. We'll still take you, buddy. Maybe after Kyle, maybe after but it'll be 118000 uh, I know uh, JJ can relate to this. Uh, one thing Tanya and Dave brought in was a uh, video of Digger Doug. Some of you little children have seen Digger Doug. Uh, there's two characters, Digger Doug and Iguana Don. I think Kyle's Iguana Don. No, I'm not sure. He's but Digger Doug. He's Digger Doug? Okay. All right. So, but I know JJ, Captain Faith, and several other characters would relate to that. But uh, these are great for kids to get them started, get them thinking. A Discovery Magazine, if, if your family's not getting it and you have small children, uh, sixth grade and under, see me and we'll try to, try to make that happen. But uh, one, 
What advantage of, uh, now, by the way, Bethany is Marilyn's daughter as well. I mean, you know, <laughs> Kyle married Bethany. I'm the father-in-law. She's the mother-in-law. You know? But uh, one advantage of, of having right. a connection with Kyle is when we go to exposure, I could get a, you know, Kyle would get in there and give a, give a demo to uh, our youth group, which was, you know, it's hard to get him scheduled for something. And if you see us missing one Wednesday night, we're down at River Chase during his summer series. They seem to book him pretty steadily. But uh, anyway, it's, it's just uh, Admission Sunday has been great. Y'all have been a great congregation. And, and this has been, uh, we're going to wrap it up next week with JJ uh, talking about youth campaigns and some other mm -hmm. things. And we're just very blessed to be here. Did somebody have a question? Or? All right. Uh, Jack, would you word us in a closing prayer? And, would you think about those folks in Texas where you were that prayer? Let us pray. Our Father in God who art in heaven, we thank you, Father, for being our Father and taking care of us. Father, we realize that we are so weak without you and without your grace and without your goodness. Father, help us to be a world that loves each other and not hates each other. <laughs> help us to be a world that teaches each other about you and your great grace for us. Father, we pray for the ones in Texas that are suffering tonight and all the people that are suffering because of death in Chicago and everywhere else. Father, we pray that they will turn to you, use this tragedy to turn to you and realize that you're our only hope.